Hey, it's Daryl Langton from TechCrunch. We're here at CES 2015. I'm here with Brendan Erib at the Oculus demo station. I did put a French, we talked about this, but it's a French name. I put a little bit of French accent twist on it. I French hope you bashed, appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what are, we, what, are we, what are you showing here at the show this year? So this is a really exciting show for us. Last year we debuted the Crystal Cove prototype for yep. the first time. Uh, this year we're showing the Crescent Bay prototype for the first time. That's on PC VR publicly. Right. Um, we showed it privately at our own uh, conference a month or two ago. Um, but now for the first time we're showing it to the public. Uh, we're putting it out there. We're getting feedback. Crescent Bay is a huge leap from Oculus Rift DK2, mm -hmm. um, which is what Crystal Cove eventually became. And it increases all the different parts improve, whether it's resolution, uh, the precision of the positional tracking, the latency, um, the optics themselves, everything takes a big jump and it really finally delivers what we've been talking about for a long time, this pursuit of presence. Mm -hmm. It finally delivers um, on that presence that we feel like is good enough for consumers, where it kind of all begins. Okay, so that means that this is gonna be on Best Buy shelves tomorrow? Not on Best Buy shelves tomorrow, <laughs> no. It's gonna be here at CES. Yeah. Um, we've also added something new, which we haven't shown before, um, which is VR audio, 3D audio, where you can actually hear something above and below you, not just a kind of a two-dimensional plane around you, but actually full 3D. So you could hear something rattle on the floor and then you'd look down at the floor, or you'd hear something above you pop and then you'd look up or look behind you. So it's like a virtual surround, or essentially? Yeah, yeah, yeah 3D surround. And what makes it so special is that we have this completely precisely low latency tracked head position. Mm -hmm. So now we can manipulate that sound that you're getting in each ear based on your exact head movement. Ooh. So if you have a sound, as you get closer to it, it's gonna sound like you're getting closer to it. Yeah. Or as you turn your head, the sound will, it'll sound like it stays in that position. And do you find that that combined with the optics like adds to the sense of immersion? Or? It amplifies presence in a okay. huge way. Yeah, it's really exciting. We wanted to have it um, you know, earlier, but it's something that really took a, a lot of work to get to. We have a whole team focused on VR audio, mm -hmm. and here at CES, we're showing it off in the Crescent Bay prototype, and it's getting a lot of positive feedback. Great, and how easy is that for developers to sort of build into their products, their software that they're building? So we'll have an audio SDK. Mm -hmm. We've gone back to all of our Crescent Bay prototype demos, and we've enhanced them all with spatialized 3D audio. Uh, we've also added a little surprise or two, a new, new demo in the mix, yeah. um, specifically designed to really highlight uh, 3D yeah. audio. And so, we'll experience that later? Yes, oh, you'll great. experience okay. that today. Yeah. And then developers will put this out as an SDK um, in the not too distant future. It'll come in a few months. Cool, so what, what, what else about this model should developers get excited about? Like what, what, what really gets game developers interested in, in this, what you're making available and what will be available, I imagine, in future developer versions of the hardware? Well, the sense of presence. Okay. So really getting the sense of presence. Um, some people had little hints of it, little glimmers of hope of presence on DK1 or DK2. Um, when you tried those and you thought you did, and then you try Crescent Bay, you immediately will, usually like you immediately, yeah, yeah, exactly. You'll say, oh my gosh, never mind. What I experienced before wasn't presence, that's presence. Um, that's it, what I love about you guys. You guys are constantly like, oh, that that was, that's garbage. Not garbage, <laughs> you probably wouldn't say garbage, I said garbage, but you're I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, this is really the minimum level, uh, quality level, yeah. that we feel like is ready for consumers. And so developers are getting incredibly excited when they try it and they're like, yes, this is it. Yeah. Please ship this soon. Yeah, you know? please um, do. But I like how you always say minimum because like that doesn't mean we're going to ship minimum. That means this is where we feel comfortable that it could be this way. But you're you're still not committing to it, right? It's going to continue to get better. Yeah. Um, we we are starting to commit to something. So okay. internally, we're starting to lock in on certain components, whether it's the screen technology, the optics, um, the weight is much lighter, which is something that was a huge improvement from Oculus Rift DK2, right. uh, which got heavier and you know kind of unfortunately got heavier. Uh, now we feel like it's really at a weight that consumers can enjoy for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. um, people aren't going to be living in these things, right. but uh, you should be able to enjoy it for a while and not get fatigued based on the weight. Great. And then so in terms of the technical stuff, that's there. What about, what else do you need to hit in, in terms of being able to ship? Like, is input, like, do you need to find, like, a really good sense of input to ship, or do you need to find a software library to ship, or what else is required beyond what we, we're going to see here today? Well, it really all starts with the headset. Yeah. So we had to get the visual side of the headset to deliver presence comfortably. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't want people to get inside and after some number of minutes start having any kind of nausea or motion sickness. Um, internally, I'm 
one of the most sensitive people in the company. So I've always said that we're not going to ship the consumer version if it still makes me uncomfortable. Right. Um, Crescent Bay is really getting close to something at a comfort level that I can enjoy for 30, 60, 90 minutes at a time. Yeah. So we feel like headset wise, we're really, really close. Um, we may go headset as is. We may go headset with input. We, we're still making a lot of progress on input in R&D, yeah. and we're not ready to talk about anything on the input side. But software library, you, you're, you're, you like where it's tracking right now? We like where it's tracking. I mean, DK2 had some challenges yeah. with compatibility, and we try to set expectations again and be transparent. It, it you know, I think one article was DK2 is a hot mess, and that's okay. <laughs> um, we don't want the consumer product to be a hot mess. It needs to really work well. And that's something that we're spending a lot of time on from the SDK perspective. Um, easy to use, compatible with systems, setting min specs, telling develop, uh, consumers, this is what you're gonna need to have to enjoy a great experience. Great. So we're getting we're getting close. Yeah. Okay, so just to close, exactly how much will it cost and exactly when will I be able to buy it? Those are two questions <laughs> I can't answer today. Um, but I can show you a demo of Crescent Bay okay. for the first time publicly with VR 3D audio. I will settle for that. Great. Thanks.